if you're not following the party line, if you're not doing what you're told, if you're not being a good boy, you'll get cut off. You'll get cut off from the currency. You'll get cut off from Amazon. You'll get cut off from PayPal. You'll get cut off from the banks. You'll get cut off by these private companies that we rely on and the government is not there to protect us as a result. Yo, Elliot. Joe Elliott, any tips to safeguard against inflation? The Canadian government is printing cheap cash, and it's sad to think my savings, which are tied up in American and Canadian markets, are dwindling in value even as the numbers climb. Should I stockpile cash under my mattress or stockpile the goods that uh, cash will provide, mainly food, I guess, or should I invest in some cryptocurrency? Caveat, before I answer this question, I am not an expert in finance. Uh, not even a little bit. I can give you some, you know, cut and paste answers that I know a lot of people are into these days. Um, you know, gold is going up in values, you know, precious metals, uh, Bitcoin's going up. But, you know, sign a waiver. You know, I'll, I'll give you a waiver on this one. Do not take my advice on that. But I am thinking about the future. There is hyperinflation coming to the U.S. and to Canada and probably throughout the world. And one of the things we can do is we can look to countries who have experienced hyperinflation and how those people dealt with it. And I wanna make a book recommendation. I'll tell you a little bit about it, but it's this book here. When I read your question, I, I pulled this out of my library, Surviving the Economic Collapse. And it's written by uh, Furfal uh, Aguirre. He also has a YouTube channel. And it's based on firsthand experience of the 2001 economic collapse in Argentina. and he goes on to explain why it's important for Americans, you know, North Americans, to read a book like this because Argentina was in it was is a a very industrialized country. You know, you you can see like you know economic collapse in certain countries that are maybe a little less like the U.S. and Canada. But apparently, according to him, Argentina was right up there with it. It was just like you know an extension of the U.S. It was a very very wealthy country, and then overnight there was economic collapse. And, you know, he goes on to into why those things happen. And it has a lot to do with, it mirrors what's going on in our countries right now. But he gives practical advice on what to do when the collapse comes. And he gives not just financial advice, but lifestyle advice and things to take consideration of, right? Like, so for example, when hyperinflation hits and the prices of food goes up, crime goes up. And so there's an entire section on, you know, preparing yourself for the coming crime waves. And he says, you all of a sudden crime is just going to start, you, you know, where there was none, it's just going to start creeping in. Right. Even if you live in a safe neighborhood, people are desperate. And when they're desperate, they're going to do desperate things. And so as a result, you have to protect yourself and you have to protect your family. So he gives lots of he gives advice on everything from how to protect your home. Right. We want to think in terms of being able to protect our home, how to protect your body. This is part of the reason when I bought this book, that's when I start, got into firearms. He was like, you, you, you should train yourself on firearms. And if you live in a country where you can carry firearms, you should carry firearms, especially if you notice that this uh, hyperinflation is coming. It's hitting and, uh, you know, bad things are are on their way. He also goes into how to prepare your vehicle. And he says you should take defense driving courses. He talks about the um, the type of crime that would that started becoming very popular in Argentina after the collapse, which was uh, p carjackings, essentially, where you'd be driving and then somebody would, you know, they'd block you off of the car. And this was just happening like every day, all the time. And he says you should learn how you should take some defensive driving classes so that you can learn how to swerve and, and get out of the way when these guys, you know, you know, are trying to carjack you. In it, he also, so he talks about like, you know, where to live. It was better to be in the country. He talks about home security. Um, and then of course, stockpiling, right? Like what food to store, how to store your water. When I got this book, I started store, uh, storing a whole lot of water. I just threw it all away. This was back in like 2016. I started storing a whole lot of water. Uh, we're moving now. So I poured out all that water, uh, self-defense. And then he has a whole chapter. It may be the last, it is the last section. It's on finance, networking, and the new world you live in. And he talks a lot about finances and money. I wanted to get to that here for you guys. Uh, of course, he says precious metals will be important. Just based on his advice, he says don't go buy gold bars or like, you know, um, like gold 
big pieces of gold and shit like that. He says it's better to invest in gold jewelry. This is just his advice. He says get rings, get uh, buy jewelry. He talks about like you know back in back in the day like the old Indian dudes. You'll see they would have like a hundred chains on them because it would put all their wealth in wearable gold, right? And it's not that you're wearing it for for fashion. The reason why he says it's better to buy wearable gold, gold jewelry, is because when a barter system will ultimately develop, this is what he says, and you want to be able to, rather than give, uh, try to trade with gold coins, which if you have gold coins, he says they start becoming, people get suspect, they're like, oh, this guy has gold coins, and wherever there's a gold coin, there's more gold coins, but he says if you have like a gold ring, right, or if you have a gold necklace, you could take off a few links to the, of the necklace, and you could trade, right, he says it's better to do that, because people will think that you're desperate, if you have gold coins, and you're trying to trade with gold coins, people will think that you're wealthy. But it's just his advice. Right? It's not my advice, it's his advice. I'm just telling you what he said. Um, he says, but if you if you have gold jewelry, like pieces that you're selling, that you want to sell as a result, because you know, gold prices will go up and people will barter with precious metals. He says, you look more poor. He says, you want to look, you want to look poor. And so by giving away a ring, maybe you go to the pawn shop and you buy rings, you know, gold rings. And you could just kind of like, you know, I'm parting with my dead great grandmother's ring, right? And even though it's a, a, a pawn shop ring, it that person will, you know, maybe even work with you a little bit more because you look desperate, or they just won't think of you in terms of, hey, that guy has gold coins, right? So he says the best kind of, the, his advice is the best kind of gold and silver is wearable, right? I'm just telling you. Uh, if you're the type of person that has like, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that you want to uh, you know, protect, uh, a, better, a better resource for that would be uh, the Sovereign Man. He's, if you go to the website Sovereign Man, he's all about how to protect your wealth. I'm not talking about wealth. I'm talking about survival, to protect your wealth. And um, so just a side recommendation, look, at, look up to Simon Black. Simon Black has a whole website, he has a whole, he teaches you how to ex, expatriate your money and how, what to do in order to, you know, set up bank accounts in other countries and having multiple passports. And that's like, that's, if I were to do something strategic in a big way, I would follow Simon Black's information. But, you know, if you're just, if, I'm just a basic dude, I'm just a basic dude like you and I'm trying to survive, this book is more about just basic survival. Um, he says, during the, the first part of the collapse, cash will be king. He says, do not uh, do not get rid of all of your cash. He says that even while you know things are going bad, people are still going to be trading cash. All of the uh, digital currency gets shut down. That's what he said. So if you're hoping to trade Bitcoins when there's hyperinflation, you it might be in trouble. Because he says all the bank, all the digital trading, all the digital currency... Uh, you know, when you go to your bank and you're trying to transfer, all the cards stop working. He says none of that works. He says cash is king. Um, he also talks in terms of recession-proof jobs, right? You should be you should be useful as a man. Uh, he talks about if you have a truck, you should be like collecting scrap metals and shit like that. Lots of different things. I mean, it's a thick book. He's got a lot of uh, information on networking and, and building networks and bartering and real estate and all that kind of stuff. He talks about self-defense. When I read this book, that's when I started doing uh, Muay Thai. Handguns. He tells you all about the best best weapons to get, best guns, best knives, what to do when you don't have water, how to clean water, how to pull together a bug out bag. On and on and on and on. A great book. Highly recommend it. So although I can't give you finance advice, right, which I would be, I'd be so out of order if I, if I was doing that, um, I would, I would direct you to these resources, surviving the economic collapse, and then Simon Black, sovereign man, and that's essentially where I would go if I were to, you know, make a, make a plan, make a strategy for the coming hyperinflation that is probably going to happen worldwide. I think that there's a plan to bring us into a, a, a new, a new world order, a new order, uh, and the order will be based, as it usually is, on new currency. And there is this push for a one world currency. And in order to have that one world currency, we have to have uh, you, you got to break down all you got to break down all the other currencies. You got to collapse. So I think there's an active move to collapse to collapse the U.S. dollar, perhaps in Canada as well. And as those currencies collapse, 
there will be a there will be an introduction into a new um, a new currency. And who knows what that's going to look like, right? It may be something very simple and smooth. It may be very smooth. It may be one of these things where like hyperinflation hits, you suffer for a little bit, but then all of a sudden the new currency rolls out. The only thing that I'm concerned about is what kind of hoops are we going to have to jump through in order to participate in the new economy? And it's, it's getting more and more challenging, and you see it out in the world right now, where the corporations are running the world. You know, it's, the governments aren't even as powerful as they once were. The governments really aren't in power any longer. It's the, it's, it's the uh, tech corporations. They're the ones that are going to decide. And this is very dangerous. When tech runs the world, they're not under the obligation to protect the people in the same way that a government is. And so you're watching how, you know, certain people will like, so for example, Alex Jones is the most extreme example, but like they will, if you're not following the party line, if you're not doing what you're told, if you're not being a good boy, you'll get cut off. You'll get cut off from the currency. You'll get cut off from Amazon. You'll get cut off from PayPal. You get cut off from the banks. You'll get cut off by these private companies that we rely on and the government is not there to protect us as a result. So that's as far as, the unfolding of a new world currency, it's probably going to be based on the Chinese model of um, social credit systems. And we've already seen it, right? You don't, it, it, COVID is kind of like a pre, is a pregame for this, right? If you don't get the vaccine, if you don't wear your mask, if you don't believe in the almighty uh, COVID religion, well, you just, there just might not be any room for you, buddy. They're doing the, the 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 vaccine passports and stuff right now. Will the pa passport be uh, attached to your ability to trade? Who knows? All stuff that you you want to at least be aware may happen. It may not happen, but becoming more self sufficient is the key. Uh, I'm excited to be moving out to the ranch where we're in rural Florida and all of my, most of my neighbors are ranchers, right? There's, the, there's ranchers, there's farms, there's uh, plantations, right? But across the street from me is all the guy that lives across the street from me. He owns thousands of acres of uh, cattle ranch. The guy behind me owns acres and acres of orange groves. So you want to you want to develop a network where maybe if things go sideways, at least you have people that you could trade with and be of service to as well. And so these just these are just all things to consider, my dude. I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.